So as we learned this spring, virtual learning, it can be tough on families. I talked to the Chief Education Strategy Consultant, Dr. T Tashika Green, who has over 18 years of experience as an educator, and she's also a mom to three children, for some tips on how to make this school year a success. I love that you've come up with a few tips for parents to be able to get through however long this goes on. What are um, some of your tips, starting with knowing what your role is? <laughs> exactly. The first one is to understand the role. I think as parents that we're trying to take the role as the teacher, but that is not your role. Understand your role. Just be there to help your child, to support them, and to help them through the understanding of the learning. There's a quote that says, tell me I forget teach me I remember, but involve me and I learn. And so we really want you to at times involve and engage your children rather than to teach them, just help them to understand, to support them. And when engaging them, engage them critically as well mm -hmm. as actively. Yeah, you don't have to be a math expert to be helping your kids still. Exactly. I for, we've forgotten a lot of that stuff. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of the parents are saying, well, I don't understand the new math and so things of that nature. And again, we need you to just support your children to help them mm -hmm. and ensure that learning keeps going at home. Do people tend to make it more complicated than it needs to be? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Ellen, e even through my own experience, when we started distance learning in March, I just had to take a work week and just regroup mm -hmm. and say, how are we going to do this and make it work for both of us? And so keep it simple. I always say that it's about the child and not the work. And so there's so many things at home that you can do to keep um, learning engaged and keep it relevant. When you're making something, have them right there with you and measuring. Uh, when you're reading, have them reading beside you. You know, even my son set up a store during this time because everybody was eating all the snacks. And he said, if you want the snacks, we have to pay for them. But he created that himself. And that was a learning experience. And so keep it simple. Determine what's important. What's important is to make sure that your child is reading writing and speaking every day. Make sure that they're reading something for at least 10 to 20 minutes. Make sure they're writing through journaling or creating their own stories. And also make sure that they're engaged, as I said, in thinking each and every day. Your son is so creative. I love that. Um, something we heard, especially back when everything was starting in March, was to keep some sort of routine. Do you recommend yes. that for the fall too? Most definitely. And mm -hmm. I love John Maxwell. And he says the secret mm -hmm. to success is found in your daily routines. And mm -hmm. so you have to establish those daily routines, uh, even starting now, start preparing your children for the first day of distance learning, getting back into a routine of getting on a, a bedtime schedule, set a schedule for the day. What does it look like when we, we wake up, build and breaks throughout the day, um, making sure you have good eating habits. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we've been snacking a lot during quarantine. So let's get Guilty. back to those. <laughs> exactly. Let's get back to those good eating habits. And I always say practice mental maintenance. Take good care of yourself. Get in the time that you need for self-care, not only for you, for the children as well. They're going through a lot. This is a, a very emotional time for everyone. So practice mental maintenance for everyone. Get back into those routines because they're going to result in some success. I think my favorite tip of all is tip number four, where you plan your work and you work your plan. I love hey, that. Listen, that's right. Good planning relieves stress, both for you and your child. So we want to make sure we prioritize what's important, put those plans in place. I also say build in balance and boundaries. So start to create a learning environment for your, your children, just as you have created a work environment. We all now have shifted and created these spaces for work. Create a space for your child for that learning environment. Have the supplies that they need. Well, I see that they're still posting back to school supplies. Yes, we need them because they need it in their environment and their space. And also, as I said, set those boundaries. Although we're home, we should not be extending the child's school day or even our work day. We are not doing 24-7 work. So set the boundaries for your child's learning as well as for your work. What about for parents who want to have it all together on day one, but then realize there are some kinks in the system? You can adjust at any time, right? Exactly. I say this all the time. Celebrate, reflect, adjust, repeat. Mm -hmm. celebrate the milestones that you have made as well as your children have made. And then look at those things and say, what is working well? And what do I need to adjust? 
and then adjust those things that need to be adjusted and then repeat and try again. Listen, it's all about, I always say, we don't practice until we get perfect. We practice until we get better. And each mm -hmm. and every day during this process, you'll get better. And please leverage the supports out there. Leverage your school, leverage your administrators at the school, even your supervisor, express to them the things that you need because we are all working together. We are better when we are together and leverage the support of your network of people that have children and are going through similar things as you. Dr. Tashika, Tashika, excuse me, Green has so many more tips. You can follow her on Instagram. She's just at Dr. Tashika Green.